Hi, my name is Sean Taylor. That's my friend Chris Ford, a.k.a. The Objective Geek of YouTube and Twitter. And welcome to Avatar The Last Podcasters. Not six seasons in a podcast. That's 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 our spinoff show later. And this week we're going to do... Or, or Community Podcasting 101. Although I did steal that idea from someone whose podcast was called Community Rewatching 101. 101. Uh, no, it should be Community Podcasting 101. Like their, <laughs> yeah, like their class title, Lighters yeah. 101, Grifting 101. Yeah. <laughs> but the Grifting episode is one of the saving graces of, of Season 6, for sure. Like, Season 6 <laughs> is not good, but the Grifting episode, the Paintball episode, and the Mantzoukas uh karate kid episode are I like I like the I like the wedding one. <laughs> or I just like when he gives a speech of when they find out <laughs> maybe just that scene. That okay, I I'm okay on the episode. I like it when um gosh, what's IT guy's name? The black guy. I can't I'm blanking Keith on David. I don't, I don't know I don't know his character's name, but the actor's name is Keith David. I should though. I literally just watched it today. What the hell is his name? Anyway, he's really addicted to complimenting him. white people. And he explains it's like, you know, in, yeah. in eighties Silicon Valley, <laughs> it the way to get anywhere was to like make white people feel good about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like compliments. There's a man who knows how to handle his meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I like so I like when Man, why can't I think of his name? Um, I like they're they're doing they're putting on something, and he he's IT, but from like the seventies. Yeah, he was that old, and uh, he was like head of the game at that point. And someone puts him in charge of handling some type of computer or data. He's like, yeah, I I think I can handle myself there. You know what 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 memory are they up at to this point? Gigabytes, <laughs> megabytes, and. Then, <laughs> It's like terabytes. No, no, he doesn't even say terabytes. He just says Terra, just very flat. Yeah, yeah, right. He says Terra. Terra. Leroy, Elroy. Uh, Elroy is his name. Elroy. Terra. He takes all glasses. Those, those sons. He says stuff like I did. Oh, that's so great. He's a he's a great character. I I hope. And I even like the girl. I forgot her name too. But these were like weirdly good additions. That's another one that felt like new character. If I think about it long enough, I can name the actress probably first because she's in Heather's crime shows, and she's like the same person, right? Like, because you know she's got sharper features. Like, she just looks like a stern person, and she's in some of Heather's crime shows. And she's Frankie. She's Frankie in the show. And then Frankie. if I thought really hard, I could probably think of the actress name. She's great, but I, she's I, really I'm good in a in a in a foil in a foil to Jeff, and also just everybody's like, because by this point in time, things are goofy. They're used to goofy stuff. They are, and she is not goofy. They're both better than the the former cop from season five. I don't remember his name either, but they're both better than him. What's his name? Oh God, we're terrible uh, at names. For for me, professing to like the show, I can't remember any side characters. Uh, Buzz, but but oh oh, I liked him just fine. But he was more so a. That's when it was on Yahoo. No, season season five. Yep. Yeah, which is weird. That was because that was weird when Yahoo four was trying to much, launch. It. Yeah, four is pretty much the whole regular crew until Troy leaves. And then, yeah. even Pierce doesn't die until no, that he I think five. he ends up getting they end up getting he ends up splitting from them because he's like whatever this is happening, like I don't want to be part of it because they do something that yeah. pushes Pierce away. Late, I forget what it was. That's late season four. So season four, most of it, the whole gang yeah. is still together. And then, gosh, season four really would be. Really okay if it ended better. That last paintball episode, it's abrupt, and the season ends abruptly, and it's a bad episode. Otherwise, season four would be just fine. Gas leak or no? Anyway, that's a whole different. That's a whole different podcast. Obviously, that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> now, there's a man who knows how to handle his meatballs. They today on our podcast, <laughs> our real one that exists, we're going to talk about. 
the quintessential Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated series, quintessential Avatar The Last Airbender episodes. And what I mean by this, I'm going to describe it as an elevator speech. And it's the top five episodes that, uh, Chris, you've got 20 minutes to tell somebody or to explain to somebody what Avatar is all about. So not necessarily uh, best or favorite, just like, hey, give these episodes that just represent what Avatar is. And, and yeah, not necessarily trying to like sum up the story, but just mm-hmm. like these episodes exemplify what Avatar is about. Not like trying to be like, oh, this is the beginning. So then, of course, I'm going to pick episode one. Of course, we're going to pick a couple in the middle and then we're going to end with whatever episode. Yeah, we're not going to persuade some because, like, if you're going to persuade me and, and I said, well, I like fights, I like anime fights, like, all right, well, here's the finale. Like okay, great. no, just uh the 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 quintessential episodes, the ones that represent what Avatar is, and we'll snake back and forth, uh five through one, and there may or may not be. I think I've got one. I'm, I'm not gonna say it's an easy list, but I really only have one episode that was close enough that I'm gonna call it an honorable mention, one or two honorable mentions. But uh, before Chris, I feel so rude. I didn't even ask you how how you how are you doing in the past ninety minutes since we started talking. Even better. Even better. We didn't really talk about hobbies or anything last time. Uh, we did talk about football. I assume that's that's going to take over my life at least. Have you how how is figure painting coming? Uh, the hobby is well, it's still it's on pause. I pause hobbies sometimes. That's fair. Uh, hobbies step aside <laughs> but, but yeah that one's on pause i haven't even drawn anything in a while um i need to get back into some hobby because lately it's just i just come at night and i'm like <laughs> like it's child <laughs> you didn't even pick up oh maybe not um i heard you say something dirty. <laughs> lately i just the nighttime comes around I just <laughs> my <laughs> subject. At night time, I just like oh, let me turn on the TV because mm-hmm. used to I would be like oh, time to work on the hot. Mm-hmm. But so I gotta get back into some type of hobby. Giovanni likes Ghibli, so we've uh, been watching some Ghibli movies, and mm-hmm. uh, he also likes video games. So I've been playing. Not even multiplayer stuff, but just showing him. So, like, uh, Nino Kuni is a, essentially a Ghibli game, or like he likes pretty standard Mario stuff. So, we played a little of that together. And then also, football's on. So, that's going to, that will wreck my life. But, oh, anyway, in, in that case, Chris, let's, let's do top five quintessential Avatar The Last Airbender episodes. Mm. Uh, I'll do my five first, and we'll snake that way. All right. Chris, my number five is. The uh, obviously it's number five. It was the trickiest one, but I love the dynamics it shows, and it's the fire bending masters. I think it shows. <laughs> it's not the part that I struggle with it being quintessential. Is there's, it's it's missing some of the the more charming, funny elements. Not even funny, but just more charming personality elements that the other episodes on my list I think have. Uh, but it shows. I think like it's a one episode where you see within the episode some real growth and progression, um, and and then seeing Aang and Zuko together, obviously standing alone, wouldn't maybe have the same impact. But uh, a singular episode that shows the growth and progression toward achieving these 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 powers or mastering these powers that they have in a way that I don't know that any other episode by itself really does so i was you know i put a little asterisk by this one it was definitely my number five but it's one i would like to show people as like uh they're not just i mean they are just born with these powers but it's not it's not magic it's distinctly not magic that's my number five that's a good pick uh i feel like this one might be on your list if it's not it's a surprise that it's on my list not on your list um oh i didn't even comment on on yours. Uh, yeah, Fire Bay Masters, um, not on my list, but it's a really great episode. Shows a lot about just what real firebending is. Because um, I think to the outside viewer, they're probably, oh, fire, bad. Yeah. Right. But that episode is uh, it's like, you know, like fire is life. 
and stuff, not just destruction. Uh, yeah, subverts <clears throat> expectations, uh, shows a journey. It's great. It's good stuff. Yeah. My number five is The Cave of Two Lovers. It's Secret Tunnel. It's, it is almost a quintessential must-watch episode to not only get the sense of the, of the dynamic between Ang and Katara, like there's this there's this thing that bounds them almost. Um, also shows their relationship. And then you just get the humor and an avatar. So much of Avatar is about the humor. And uh, it's a really funny episode. <laughs> like, it is. It's... How, did, how did I forget his name? You know his name. Chong. The... Chang. Chang. Chong. 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 It's Chong. It, it's just so funny. And how Sokka reacts to it. It, you get so much of what Saga is as a character. Oh, man, and it ends with, like, hey, guys, I don't want to freak you out, but I think that guy might be the Avatar. <laughs> it's like, no, first, the, the joke sets up. It's just joke writing one-on-one. You got to set up or whatever. That is that's an animation Saga. comedy. Goodbye, ask Saga, why is your head red? And then he comes by and, and says that, and he's just like... Ugh. Like he's been slapping himself. They've been annoying him so much this whole time that his head is red from him slapping himself. I Chris, I'm gonna this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it's it's too topical, I can't not say it. It it is it's my one honorable mention. I was flip flopping. I have other Ooh. I have other episodes That's... that I consider like like I'm, I'm, we'll talk about them during honorable mentions, but this is the one when I said I have one honorable mention is it's really hard for me to decide between this and Firebending Masters. The only reason I chose Firebending Masters is because I, I I was really thinking about people just seeing another, you know, another Dragon Ball Z or something with oh okay just right, and I was it's like ah oh, you know I'm what would I show people to to differentiate. Uh, it was so tough. No, that's my one honorable mention, though. My one real one. That's man, That's interesting. Great pick. It though. made my list. Didn't make your list. It is yeah. one of the most charming twenty minutes of animated television in existence, top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, oh, my number four. Hit me with your number four. Yeah, my number four is the Guru, and in the episode, the Guru. But the, great. the biggest thing that comes out of this is Aang goes through and he opens all his chakras and it's just like step by step he's having therapy. Like in Avatar to me is like so much therapy in it. So much stuff to learn and just feels like hey Aang like this is you dealing with guilt. Like you shouldn't deal with guilt because of this. And this is you dealing with shame. Like, ah, it was just such deep stuff that they approached this, you know, open your chakras is a, I'm not going to say it's a real thing, it's not a thing that I believe in, but it's a thing that people <laughs> believe in, an actual belief. That's like like back just, it's not a real thing that I believe in, but people... <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Let me try to go to my mom and be like, hey, mom, I just cleansed my chakras. She'll be like, I'm going to pray for you right now. <laughs> so, Chris, go get, go get my Bible. She, I was going to say, she just like. Chris, your son me. here. She, my mom would grab me by the collar and be like, we're going to church right now. It's at four. We can make it if we hurry. <laughs> so, no, I don't believe in chakras right, and, right. and stuff. But it is an actual thing that people believe. And. A lot of people say, like, wow, this show did a really great job with depicting at a, and, and showing at a kid's level or at all ages access level, kind of rudimentary level of how that is, how that process is. Um, from a writing perspective and a story perspective, I freaking love it. Like, it's Aang dealing with his own emotional baggage, and that character stuff is, is so freaking great. Um, we also see Top Metal Bin, and so that's a lot about the show. Uh, that is a lot of the show about progression and growth and stuff, 
Um, yeah, and you get a little bit of Azula trickery, but the main thing is the cleansing of the chakras or the opening of the chakras. I I uh, have to confess, I was way too quick to dismiss this episode. Like, I didn't really give us like, oh no, that one's so it's so rooted in the like in the spiritual, and it doesn't show enough of the other stuff. Uh, but what what you said that resonates most with me is like, you know, actually a lot of this show is therapy and is recovery even. Um, and I probably mm-hmm. should have given that more consideration, and I did not. Great, great pick. My my number four, I went with the Blue Spirit. I think the Blue Spirit Ooh. does a great job of a little bit of everything. You get a little bit of uh, action, fight, escape, clever. Eng and Zuko collaborating on the same team. Eng and Zuko being on different teams. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. this little charm, little humor. <clears throat> you see, you you already get to know in that episode. You can see that Zuko is a bad guy, but he's not the antagonist. And you can see that Zhao is the 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 antagonist. You know, in that microcosm, that episode displays very dynamically a lot of things from the larger Avatar story to to good effect. Yeah, Blue Spirit isn't on my list, but it, it does show the Zuko Aang dynamic really well. Also shows what ends Zuko's willing to go to to try and get his honor back. Yeah, um, he's committing yeah, great. And... Yeah, this, he's like this probably our nation could win. Death. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I have episodes higher up on my list, but I'm not sure there's a, an episode that hits so many notes that this one does in in a 20 minute span of that like just things. Yeah, and it ain't has to. It also has comedy in it because Katara and Saga are sick and delirious, yes. and Aang has to get pulled in the frogs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the it's offhanded and and kind of silly, but in the right way that I would want to like. Yeah, that's that's the kind of humor that you're getting into with this stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. That's my number four. Um, oh, that means it's time for my number three. My number three is... Okay, this is the one place where I did pick like a finale-ish type thing. We'll debate shortly. I bet I can... Hmm, I'm uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, take a guess. I won't tell you if it's on my list if it's not this one. I... Hmm, actually, now that... Hmm. True finale, true more? finale, not not another one that feels finale like that will come up again later. This is the one where I picked a true finale of sorts. I was gonna guess Siege of the North. It is Siege of the North Part Two because I think Siege uh, of the North Part Two, uh, similar to the Blue Spirit, you get you know uh, fighting, action, stakes, not a lot of humor, but there are some parts that I would still consider kind of uh, uh, charming. At least you get uh, Katara's. You know, Katara's uh, battle or, or gratification of Katara's journey, some gratification of, of Zuko's journey. Um, you're starting to see what kind of characters Zuko and Iroh really are relative to like Zhao, for example. Mm. Uh, you yeah. see, you get to see the giant fish The you know, the ocean spirit is the coolest thing in the world. And so, uh, again, like the blue spirit, other than maybe just missing some of the lightheartedness is a really great, like, if you put this in front of somebody, if they're like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool, I'm like, absolutely, yeah, then you need to watch the whole show. And if they don't see anything here that they like, well, it's probably not for them. Mm, yeah. Uh, I won't talk on this. Uh, I will, because it is my number three. Nice. <laughs> As well. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, which is, yeah. Siege of the North, my number three. It is the, I think it might be the episode where I was like, oh, this show is another level. Like, I thought the show was here, but actually the show's here. Like, the, I don't think, an, I don't think another episode. Contiguously much, in, in order. Yeah, I don't think another episode has as much, like, artistry in it. Be, except for the Zuko Zula fight, like even though, like vi- like vi- archery and, and vision, 
and just everything coming together. Because while the Aang versus Zuko fight has that energy bending clash, and it's like cool, it doesn't compare to when Aang is like, no, it's not over, not yet. He got he, like the old spirit takes over, and then the blue the water glows and it spreads, and then and then the ocean spirit comes up, and it's just him wreaking havoc. Water benders praying to him, so he doesn't attack them. They attack the Fire Nation when they're all bowing to him. They're so like it's such a simple thing, and it makes so much sense, but it's so cool. It's such an awesome detail. Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah, as you mentioned, yeah. I'm, I'm blabbing about other things. It's amazingly animated, tremendously animated. God, what a, what a finale to the first season of the show! What an incredible finale! Yeah, yeah. This this show has. I for a minute, my first thought was season of the North that was going to be your third pick, and I was like, oh wait, maybe he'll say the other finale for uh, book two, but season North is just so. So freaking good. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and, oh, and UA sacrifices herself. Ah, good stuff. We, you know, I think we do have to do top deaths. Uh, we'll, we won't <laughs> word it top like best. We'll find a nicer way to like <laughs> most uh, impactful tragic, death? impactful deaths, tragic deaths, something. Um, not tragic because sometimes yeah. bad guys who kind of anyway. We'll we'll figure out a way Ooh. to word it, but that's a cool. Thing that we'll have to do. Yeah. Cool as death. Cool as death. <laughs> my, it's a, my wife's a funeral director. I can say those things. That's all our small. <laughs> so dark. Dude, I can't believe the way that Katara saw her mom get killed. You weren't supposed to pick one that was going to hit me so hard. <laughs> that was a. Katara's mom. I had a fan. Ouch. <laughs> Right in the childhood. <laughs> my my number two is Zuko alone. Well, I don't with CJ North again. These aren't listening order of like best episodes. I just think Zuko alone such a quintessential Zuko episode, and this this concept has now become almost a staple in Avatar. Like. Oh, they had a Zuko alone episode. Okay, they had a Korra alone episode. Oh, they had they have other kind of alone episodes where the characters just left by themselves <clears throat> in a somewhat new setting to reflect on the past. Um, we got to see so much about Zuko in this episode. Got to meet his mom. I know this episode definitely isn't on your list <laughs> because, or maybe. It's, um, it it's now, but, uh, but I think yeah, I think you'll be not too not too upset with my following choices. Anyway, continue. <clears throat> um, but it ends in like like it's a freaking spaghetti western episode, um, which is kind of contradictory to saying like oh these are quintessential after episodes because most after episodes aren't like this, um, but they are really deep character studies. I think. Um, and this episode really dies into Zuko as a character. Also, it ends bittersweet for Zuko. Like Zuko's like, I'm Zuko, and I'm here. And like the, the mom ends up turning his back on. Like she's afraid of him. Like that fear of him just because he's Fire Nation, I'm sure impacted him the rest of the story. Because they were all great. But then once he once they found out he was Fire Nation, which I don't blame them on at all, that's what of course she should do. Her son was just, her other son was just killed by the Fire Nation. And this is the son of the Fire Lord? Like, of course you're going to be afraid. Like, he could be trying to trick you or something. Um, so, I really love this episode. So, I did not pick Zuko alone, but for similar ish. And the main reason uh, Zuko alone, and you kind of said it, the tone. It's not very often replicated in the show like that. It's a it's a one-off episode. It's very powerful. Uh but like if I were pitching somebody the show or or trying to explain it, like man, this would be a uh a, a more tragic episode, I think. Yeah, it's a dark tone, but I did pick my number 2 is The Storm. 
And what it boils down to is I think the storm gets across a couple like similar ish themes. Uh, you know, you're some serious inner tor- turmoil being witnessed. Hopefully, man, hopefully the live action storm didn't, didn't bias me into this pick. I should have really thought harder about that, but, uh, I think the storm does a really good job of starting to show you these deep themes, but it still has just some of the charm and levity that I, uh, expect and and want to see in the show at large uh but but the but the main the the main takeaway from the storm is is deep deep characters deep meaningful uh characters that you know you're going to grow to love over time and i think that's i think that would be important to to sort of hooking people in or, or really demonstrating the the overall style of Avatar the Last Airbender. Like, I feel like I was shooting for a similar thing, but I went the storm just yeah. it's a hair, yeah. <clears throat> a hair softer, I guess. I think. Yeah. 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 Storm's really good. It is. Um, Chris, we're going to do honorable mentions and then we're going to admit that we have the same number one episode because I think that is a given. Because it is a given. Maybe we don't, Sean. Maybe we don't, but let's talk about honorable mentions anyway. Uh, Chris, the ones I had honorable mentions, I put Cave of Two Lovers, Zuko Alone, I put a little asterisk by because I gave it some thought. And then Bitter Work okay. is one that maybe doesn't, oh. maybe doesn't get Ooh, quite enough work. recognition, yeah. but is a good, uh, <clears throat> get just a good microcosm of, of the larger show, Bitter Work. And yeah, those were my those are my three, but the only ones that I really, the only one I really considered and fought with myself over was Cave of Two Lovers at six and Firebending Masters at five. So some of mine, they're not really in order. <clears throat> Tells the boss things said. Um, thought that was really, mm-hmm. really good. Uh, just really shows, really you get a sense of every single one of the main characters. Yeah. Um, and it, it's dynamic comedy, in kind of tone and, and feelings. It's a good pick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so some comedy, even though it's so much cheating because it's four episodes. Um, but still, great finale. No, and uh, minutes, Chris, you lose. That's wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, although it does have the Zuko Ira reunion, ah, love that. Um, and then uh, Blind Bandit. Yeah, Blind Bandit's so fun. Just. I keep saying, but that's, I mean, it's just a fun episode top to bottom. Yeah. If the blind bandit had just a little more of Toph's, um, of Toph's situation in it, like if you got to see a little more of the character development in that episode, I think it would be a great example of what Avatar is top to bottom. That's fantastic. Chris, uh, do you want to say you're number one or me, or do we say them at the same time because they're the same? Uh, all right, yeah. uh, I'll go. Go. Because I am confident they're not the same. Oh, so my what? number one is The Beach. I hate you. I'm kidding. I'm Get out of here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Get out of here. <laughs> If you show me the beach, I wouldn't, would. I wouldn't watch the show. I was like, you want me to watch a teen, an animated teen dramedy? That's crap, and I hate it. And wouldn't watch it. I, if 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 we for some reason is watching us for the first time, I love the beach. That wasn't that was a joke at Sean. I for one love the beach. In the context, uh, not enough of that the it would be. Series, you love the beach. That would not be a quintessential episode. I I do really love the episode of the beach. Uh, but I know our number one isn't the same because my number one oh. is the storm. Oh, oh, great! Hey, which, how about which that? is why, which is why, I, yeah, which is why I just quickly been like, you Crossroads of Destiny didn't even make your honorable mentions, or are you just being nice to my number one? No, it. it well, well, I'm. It didn't make my honorable. I don't know, just in terms of. Actually, it's pretty great. That's a great fight. You get the fight. You, no, get, the, you get the the yeah. dynamics of 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 all the various I think, parties. I think because I think maybe because it's it was too impactful, too like action heavy. Which was, too... no, not too action. It was just too like it's almost too plot. It's 
I don't know, it's almost too intense. No, not even that. It's just too. Ah, I can't even like. I guess too chronological. Like it has to go. I'm like you can't just. It's one of the episodes where I don't. I don't know why. It's just. Oh, just didn't make the list. I guess, but it is. It's oh, one of fair. the best episodes. Okay, uh, but for some reason, I so got to it. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is the most. I think I even held the guru ahead of it. I mean, I did. I did, of course. Well, um, since yeah. we both we both like the storm, so let me let me do my my spiel on Crossroads, and then let's talk about the storm and why the storm between the two of us is probably the highest numerical value one, right? But if like Crossroads of Destiny, I was picturing my little elevator speech, and and I just had an episode to show. And it, there's, there's not, there's not a lot of humor, but there, there's some minor charming moments, um, and I think the tone isn't, the tone is really dark because he's, well, it, it's really dark, but not the whole time. Like it, there's really dynamic feelings, and there's so much good animation and fighting, and so much good character. It is a lot. But, you know, that's kind of what I was going for. That's kind of why I was going to put maybe the exact reason that you didn't want it on there is why I do is like, yeah, this this is Avatar right here. This is peak. Maybe. Peak Avatar. <clears throat> I think I I agree that it is peak Avatar. Maybe maybe that is the reason that it, because it is a lot. Does it set There's too a lot high of a standard? Like if you show on. somebody that and then they like start at season one, episode one, they're like, wait a minute. No, I think I think because it's probably because it's a lot. Yeah. Like even, even like Siege of the North, I feel like isn't a lot. A lot. I don't so, know. Siege probably of the North is a, is a little yeah. less uh, plot heavy, right? We're we're at the climax yeah. of Siege of the North, where Crossroads of Destiny is still kind of building up to the it is, climax. It is literally the crossroads of the show. Yes, <laughs> like, there's a lot of. It like, would be yeah. It, Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. But uh, listen, Crossroads of Destiny, great episode. But let's talk about the storm, which again, like I said, I think if you if you assign point values, oh, yeah. is our quintessential yeah. episode that we would pitch people. Yeah, I think the storm. It is the linchpin of the whole series, um, and it, it is the episode that you you have to watch in order to get a gauge of the two. These are the two mainest characters to get a gauge of of who they are and also get a gauge of why do they do what they do, especially Zuko. Um <clears throat> you you this is the episode where you start to see how sympathetic you can be to Zuko. And like I said, this these backstories sets off a domino sets for the entire show. And it's to me it is the most what's essential to the, the entire of the show. It's not necessarily like it's not a funny episode or anything like that. No, there's, Action there's wise, a little have... bit of levity to it, uh, but not not extreme. True, I do like the old man, and mm-hmm. I know the point where they're like they're in the storm, and uh, Saka's like, "I'm too young to die," and he's like, "I'm not, but I don't want to die." <laughs> Yeah, there's just oh, enough there of that some... to set a tone. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, also shows like how Aang left the world, and there are ramifications for that. Not everybody is like, "Oh, hey, the Avatar's back!" Like it's like, "Hey, where'd you go?" <laughs> just watching the storm, like by itself, like if you had no other context, just watching the storm. You, I think you'd be curious about the two protagonists. I think you'd be curious about bending. I think you'd see the animation. I think you'd already be kind of at least a little bit enamored with Iroh, right? Like it would, it would do so many little things that I think would, would hook a person into like, no, I have to find out more about whatever is going on here. Uh, and then, you know, if we could show them the storm and then right after that, we show them Siege of the North part two. That's our, you know, that's our big hook. But <laughs> yeah, it, there's 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 so yeah, many bits yeah. that would I think catch a lot of people's interests. Um Yeah. It's uh it's and I think uh it's 
it's not one of my favorite it's not my favorite type of episode but talking about quintessential avatar episodes it, it hits a lot of the notes just right yeah oh. the beach get out of here the <laughs> beach. Just... I, and i like him going with the charade sh- charades for a while the <clears throat> i, I should have went a long no, drive I... I should have for a whole three minutes about how good the beach is I I wouldn't watch it if you showed me the beach and I didn't know I'd be, this this is this is a like a high school high school <laughs> drama why are, why are this why is, are they arguing about acne and yeah, stuff? And this is my Laura's. least favorite kind of TV show. It's just teenagers bitching, except for they're animated, uh, and I wouldn't watch it. So that's how I know the beach is wrong. Uh, I'm trying to think here. So obviously, Bato and and the Great Divide. Like, if you show me either of those, I'll be like, "Oh, it's about a whiny <laughs> little liar." So those are worse, right? This, don't show me this. But is the beach yeah. like the third for Sean? For Sean no, personally? Sean. Oh, for is Sean, the, yeah, for Sean, probably. Yeah. Is the beach the third worst pitch of an episode you can make? And right now, I think it is. I'll have to think a little harder. But the the Great Divide and Bato for. Uh, of the water tribe, both for ang reasons. If you showed me those, it would be worse because I'd be like, I hate this protagonist. Uh, this one, he's a lion little shit, and this one, he's a lion little shit. Uh, uh what what other bad Sean episodes? I got to think about for a sec. Im- imprisoned. Um, no, I mean, I'd be okay with that. I think maybe the water beings scroll. Okay, that'd be, that'd be uh, pretty high up on my list of like, oh, these are just obnoxious kids with magic powers. Yeah. I could see. Uh, I know you don't like Jet, but that crazy Jet would be that low on Quincy. I think Jet is a. I don't think Jet. Three with the episode of a. I don't think Jet would, would dissuade me. Uh, you know, you do a great job, again, of getting that gray area character right that's part of what draws us into avatar is this character who yeah. is good <laughs> slash bad um i don't think it would dissuade um, me i think that would the good action sequence good story yeah i don't think there's a lot more the fortune teller is almost fillery but it's still i still like the fortune teller a lot uh, um, i'm trying to think about so, how ang acts and what that wouldn't be a great turn on for me but i don't think ang does anything sort of malevolently dumb what's uh, that would probably be number four like of all the other things we've talked about so far that's probably number four on my list Better one, I'm pulling up the old ratings now just to see uh, no, I think that's 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 probably bottom it, four pretty safely. Yeah, I mean the rest I think are. Pardon me, a quintessential episode. Yeah, it would like be- even even though the head had the headband is an episode that I don't look forward to watching every time, but it's like goofy goodness. Like, I, I think like, that one would do some amount of pulling me in just from the uh, again that kind of childish goofy charm. Yeah, I think that would be okay. Yep. Nope. I just I scrolled through the ratings and titles, and I think that that those would be the four, the four most off-putting. If I had no other context, it's fine. If you show the Ember Island players to someone, they're like, "Oh, this is so meta," and they might get the wrong idea about the show being meta. But would if you were going to show me that, would I get the context that of like would? Would I get to know that, like, oh, this is the catch-up episode in season three? Because if I got to know that, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's great. If I didn't get to know that, I'd be like, what the hell? Yeah. But if I got to, if I got to know that that was like the recap episode, that would probably be a pretty fetching recap episode. Like, yeah, I got to know what. Are you, are you trying to make fetch happen, Sean? Like, oh wait, no, fetch was fetching, fetching. <laughs> I'm not going to say fetch as if it's an adjective. Uh, no, I think 
if I saw, I, I would think it was stupid, but I'd be like, you know, what? I actually kind of want to see the fleshed out version of whatever the hell's going on here. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that's our that's our top five quintessential Avatar: The Last Airbender episodes. I think the the strongest agreements that we had. So if you're looking to if you're looking to pitch to your friends. Uh, the strongest agreements we had across the board would be The Storm, uh, Siege of the North Part 2, and Cave of Two Lovers, I think were our probably highest highest rated uh, cumulatively. Throw those at your friends. Probably, in, yeah, in that order. <laughs> Specifically in that order. I mean, The Storm and then Siege of the North Part 2, like, if you just watch those two things, if that didn't get you a little excited, then, like, okay, this show's not for you at all if you watch those two back to back and didn't didn't yeah. feel a little See, something yeah. but siege of the north you could yeah it's great a person could probably watch siege of the north and be like okay let me go rewatch everything and it won't like ruin the experience of watching it well especially just being the season one finale like okay you know it's coming right now yeah but we didn't spoil much big picture yeah hey my name's sean that's my friend chris aka the objective geek of youtube and twitter this is avatar the last podcasters if you can like thumbs up comment positive reviews ring bells subscribe whatever positive interaction you can do uh, we appreciate all of it thanks for watching and we will see you next time